friends. Hello, you guys. This is our last game in our survival skills challenge. Oh uh, yeah, and I'm crushing it. I don't know, I might win though. Uh, I, I yeah. might pull this one. This one for sure, because it's something with us. So, we have three different knots that we are going to have to try and tie. I used to work at a camp, so. Me too, but I never had to tie <laughs> knots. <laughs> well, I worked at the rock wall. Oh, I've so. never done a rock wall. I know. That's like, this. you're tying <laughs> knots right now? What? I'm gonna lose this okay. so bad. We will see you guys with our first knot. <laughs> okay, friends. The first knot we are going to be tying is called a stopper knot. Stop, collaborate, and listen. So I'm gonna, see so tie. Normal knot, just regular, regular knot. And then you're gonna put your hand, actually, I need more slack in my rope. Wow, those are <laughs> big words, you guys. I used to rock climb every weekend. She can't set up a tent, but she can tie knots. Who is she? I don't know. I'm a pro. I'm a pro. I'll through with it. It looks weird now. Uh, do you guys think that you can do that? I definitely cannot. Let's try this. We are going to start our knots in three, two, one. Something like like in a normal knot, and then you go like like around. Do you go around twice? Maybe once. with this one once. Oh no. Okay. Then you go through this loop. I don't know what's happening. This is this is not it. This is like a beard. It's I am losing so bad, and we've only done one knot. The next knot that we are going to do. I don't even know if I did this one right. Yeah, I did. It's called a figure eight on a bite. This is a bite. That sounds like a TikTok dance. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it looks like I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like an eight. Yeah, it I'm looks saying. like an eight. No, it's... I don't even know if I did this one right. So we are going to race to see who can do a figure eight on a bite the fastest. Okay, ready? ready? Get your rope ready. In three, two, one. So many ropes! Megan got it first. Ah, but look, guys, I learned a new thing. She did it. Ah. For our finale, Ooh. are you ready? No. Okay, we're gonna do the figure eight knot with the stopper knot below it. Oh no, you Kay? guys. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, you ready? Maybe. Okay. Three. Two, one. <laughs> that was amazing. I won. That is one survival skill that I do not know how to do. How did you do that? Oh, well, I've never been rock climbing, so. It's very fun. Everybody should try it at least once. We're literally right next to Rockwell Church. Rockwell! Friends, all right, so Miss Megan won this one, but I clearly won the other two, <laughs> which means that you have to come back next week because the consequence is so funny. It's so bad, you guys. We're not gonna tell you what it is. It's going I'm... to be so embarrassing. Ah, I'm so excited. She's gonna struggle so hard. <laughs> my friends, we will see you next week yes. with my punishment. Woo! Bye, Bye, guys. <laughs>
they come on down All of his blessings they come around All of his blessings they come on down on me So one, two, three I'll sing and dance and jump around Cause my God knows my heart I'll laugh and run and praise him loud Cause my God knows my heart He knows my heart He knows my heart To those who Come on down All of his blessings They come around All of his blessings They come on down on me So one, two, three I'll sing and dance and jump around Cause my God knows my heart I'll laugh and run and praise him loud Cause my God knows my heart He knows my heart He knows my heart All of his blessings they come, they come 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 Hey friends, welcome back to my living room. This week I learned that pumpkins do not sink when put into water. I don't think that's true. I need to test this out. I don't have a big pumpkin right now. I just have, you know, a couple little ones like that one, a pie pumpkin, and this tiny, tiny, tiny pumpkin. And I'm gonna test them out. I'm gonna see if they sink. This month we've made pumpkin gut slime, we exploded a pumpkin, and this week I need to see if these pumpkins will sink. Apparently they don't, but like even this pie pumpkin probably weighs like five to ten pounds. It's pretty heavy. Maybe five. Maybe ten pounds is a little bit of an exaggeration. I think this maybe weighs about five pounds. I don't know, but I'm excited to test this out and I'm even gonna cut this one open. I think this one for sure will float because it's it's like tiny. But I'm gonna cut this one open. I'm gonna see if like adding rocks and things to it will help it to sink. And I just wanna see if we can make it sink. All right, let's go test this out. All right, fam. I tried to take this tote full of water outside to do this, but there's a big crack in the side and it's leaking water and I almost got water all over my house. So welcome to my bathroom. We are gonna test this out. Let's start with this tiny guy. Look how tiny that is. It's like maybe three inches across. It's so small. Let's see what happens. Oh! She floats. She floats upside down. Let's flip it over. Ooh. Still floating. That's crazy. Okay. 
Let's try this one. This one's like six inches across, a little heavier. Whoop! <laughs> Why do they always go upside down? Let's flip it back. Guys, that one's still floating. What is this? Okay, I'm gonna go get the pie pumpkin and we're gonna try it. All right, y'all. So we have two in there that are floating. But now I'm gonna put this pretty heavy pie pumpkin in, just gently, because I don't want to make a huge mess. What? You guys, there is no way that this thing is floating right now. I don't, I don't understand. I wonder if I can make it sink. I'm gonna cut open the pie pumpkin and let's see if we can make it sink. So I left the seeds in them because I wanted there to be extra weight. So let's put it in. Okay, so water did go over the top easier, but it's still not sinking. So I'm gonna go get some rocks and see if, if I put things in the pumpkin, if I can make it sink. I just grabbed a bunch of big rocks from my yard and I'm gonna put them in one by one and see if we can make this sink. So I wanna start small with this small rock. That did absolutely nothing. Let's add another one. Let's go bigger. <gasps> what? It just tipped over and knocked the rocks off. That's so rude. Let's try this again. Okay, so I just need little pouches for the rocks. We'll see if that helps. So we had a small one and a larger one. <laughs> it did the same thing. This is ridiculous. Let me hold it out. All right, friends. I took all of the seeds out of the pumpkin. Now I'm going to add my rocks back in carefully so it doesn't tip over. Oh! <gasps> Wait, what's happening? <laughs> How is that possible, you guys? I don't understand. I made it sink, but it came back up again. What is this? Okay, so no matter what I did, our pumpkin would not sink. Every single time it got to the bottom, it would just flip upside down and rise back up again. That's insane, y'all. Have you ever tried to sink a pumpkin before? Better yet, have you ever been scared? I'm not talking like kind of scared. I'm talking like so terrified that you hide under the covers and you just cry or scream or get really, really quiet because you don't know what to do because you are so terrified. I know I'm that way. Uh, in fact, I have to sleep with two nightlights, one in our bathroom and one in our bedroom because I'm scared of the dark. Like, so scared that every single night, I'm the last person to go to bed and I turn the lights off and I sprint to my bedroom and I hop into bed and I pull the covers up over me and I just bite my face. I hate the dark. I know, that's weird. I'm an adult. I should not be scared of the dark, but I am. It's okay though. It's okay to be scared. Have you ever been scared because something weird was going on in your life? I know that I've been there when I feel like I don't know what God is doing, when I feel like I don't know what God is going to do, if he's going to take care of us, then I get terrified. And in those moments, I usually don't try to talk to God because I'm so scared and I don't know what his answer might be. Have you ever been there, friends? Have you ever been so scared? I love trying to sink pumpkins today because it made me think about being scared. Sometimes when I'm so, so, so scared, it feels like I'm sinking. It feels like nothing can pull me out of the water. Like I'm just gonna keep sinking deeper and deeper and deeper, just like the pumpkin started to do when we hollowed it out and put the rocks in. Think about the last time you were afraid. What did it look like? Did you cry? Did you hide? Did you scream? Did you do nothing at all? Did you just kind of look like a deer in the headlights? Like, but the really cool thing, friends, is that because we have Jesus, we're never going to sink. I wanna tell you a story in the Bible that is so crazy to me because it talks about fear. Are you ready to hear it? Turn your ears up. Quiet your mouths, 
Take a deep breath. And let's get ready to dive into the Bible. So this story is Mark chapter four, verses 35 through 41. That's only six verses. That's not very many at all. So Jesus has just been teaching to crowds and crowds and crowds of people, like so many people all day. They want to hear the things that Jesus has to say. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like that would be exhausting. I would just need to go take a little nap after talking to that many people. And Jesus knew that's exactly what he needed to do. So Jesus is finishing up his teaching and he looks at his disciples and he says, hey guys, why don't we go to the other side of the lake and get some rest? See, Jesus often taught by water because his voice would carry that way. It would be louder, louder so more people, people could hear his hear voice and his teaching. teaching. I just imagine after teaching, hundreds and thousands of people that Jesus is just exhausted. He just needs a little nap and a little rest away from people. So Jesus says to his friends, hey, let's go to the other side of the lake. They get into their boat and they start crossing the lake. When out of nowhere, this absolutely insane storm starts coming at their boat. They're on the water in a boat and there's a massive storm. Have you ever been in a crazy storm before? So the disciples, they're in this boat, they're going to the other side of the water and this massive storm comes in and they're terrified. They think that their boat is going to sink. They think it's gonna capsize, which means flip over like our pumpkin did. And they're gonna be stuck in this lake in the middle of this storm. And I don't know how many of them knew how to swim. Friends, they were so scared. Meanwhile, our friend Jesus, he is at the back of the boat, just laying down, taking a nap because he's so tired. The disciples come at him and they just start yelling at him and they're like, teacher, do you care if we die in this storm? They were terrified. Jesus gets up from his nap and I imagine that this is how it went down. I imagine Jesus gets up. He's upset with the disciples because they just woke him up from his nap and he's tired. And he looks and he sees the storm and he just goes, Quiet! And the storm stops. The Bible doesn't tell us what Jesus said to the storm. So I just have to picture it. And that's what I picture happening. It stopped. By a single person telling the storm to stop, it stopped. The disciples, they were afraid of the storm. They became terrified because of what they had just witnessed Jesus do. Now that's a miracle, right? Like Jesus just stopped the storm. It's wild. The disciples had not seen things like this. And they're like, what is happening? Who is this man that can just yell at the storm and it stops? The wind and the waves obey his name and that's wild. The disciples were terrified. Now, eventually, you know, they made it to the other side of the lake. They got their rest. Jesus kept teaching. But the point of our story, friends, is that the disciples didn't trust that God was going to take care of them because they let their fear get in the way. Have you ever done that? Have you ever let your fear get in the way of what you needed to do? Have you ever let your fear get in the way of what God was telling you to do? I know that I have a lot because doing things for God can seem really scary sometimes. Friends, do you have something in your life that you know that God is saying, do this, but it feels too scary to do? I don't know about you, but going back to earlier, sometimes fear feels like the pumpkin that's starting to sink when we added the rocks to it. And it feels like you get so low all the way to the bottom, like you're not going to make it out of that fear. Thankfully, because we have Jesus, 
because God cares for us so much. He makes our fear tip upside down, knock out of the pumpkin and rise back up. He takes our fear away because he loves us. That doesn't mean that we're never going to be afraid again. In fact, we're going to get scared sometimes and that's okay. But friends, I challenge you when you're afraid, talk to God about it. See what God has to say about your fear. See if you feel yourself calming down as you talk to God. Maybe you don't know how to talk to God and that's okay. You know, sometimes when I don't know the words to say, I just say, God, I don't even know what to say, but you know, because God knows every thought. God knows what's going on in our hearts and he wants to be a part of our lives. So this week I challenge you and encourage you when you're feeling super afraid to think about how the disciples reacted when they were afraid. They didn't react very well, did they? Think about how we can react knowing that God loves us so much that he wants to be a part of our lives and save us from the things that terrify us. Thanks for joining me today, friends. I hope that you know that God loves you even when you're sad, even when you're mad, even when you're scared. He loves you all the time, no matter what. Have a great week.